The Weeble 2 has finally been released. It's actually right back there. It's blurred out. I want it to remain a mystery just for a little bit. So if you're looking for a new gimbal, make sure you watch this video first and let's see if this Weeble 2 is the right choice for you. The Weeble 2 went through a complete redesign comparing it to the original Weeble and Weeble S. We're talking about better quality parts, thicker joints, larger motors, and of course, a better algorithm to make more stable footage. So how does this all work? We're talking about gyro stabilization. So for those of you who are new to gimbal technology, it's basically all built into this little microchip that's inside the gimbal and it measures inertia, it measures all this movement, and it makes sure that your camera remains stable and horizon level at all times. It's actually pretty phenomenal. And if you have never tried a gimbal before, go to your local video store or photo store and just try it out because this tech is absolutely amazing. Now, if you look at my past videos, you'll know that I reviewed basically every single gimbal there is on the market and I'm, I'm just obsessed. I know where gimbals lack, I know where they perform, and the Weeble 2 definitely fixed a lot of issues with the previous Weeble series of gimbals, especially when it comes down to build quality and those slight micro jitters that a lot of people didn't like, the Weeble 2 took care of most of those problems. So let's dive deeper into the Weeble 2 and I'll show you exactly how this thing works. Now, even though the Weeble 2 is a thicker design, it still comes in a compact package. You actually get this cool little case depending on the package that you get of the Weeble 2. So uh, make sure you check out the link down below to see which package comes with this case. But anyway, you get a ton of little accessories here, including all the necessary cables to attach the video image transmission system to connect it to their new master eye video receiver unit. We're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. On top of that, you can also get the optional follow focus system or zoom controller system. And this all hooks directly into the gimbal and you can control it with the wheel on the side here. Now that's one of the things that you're gonna notice about the Weeble 2 if you compare it to the Weeble S or the original Weeble, and that is they changed the position of the follow focus wheel. And they did this because they wanted to make the joystick more easily accessible by your thumb. Another huge improvement of the Weeble 2 is its new built-in swing out 2.8 inch LCD color display. This is not a gimmick. This is not just so you can look at bigger print and bigger font on the gimbal settings, but this is also so you can direct the feed from your camera to this LCD screen so you can get better coverage or better view of what your camera is picking up. However, in order to make this feature work, you do need the video image transmission system hooked up. So again, make sure you check out the links down below to make sure you get the right package. Using the video transmission system, you can also hook it up wirelessly to Juin's Master Eye. This will allow you to wirelessly look at all of your footage and control the gimbal too. With this LCD display, you basically no longer need the app. Everything that you need to change on the gimbal, you can do within the gimbal's menu. And something new that they added within the menu is the balance checker. This will actually give you sliders, which will show you which motor is under stress. We also have the auto calibration option, which we've seen on the previous gimbals that Juin has made. So that's a great feature too. We also have motion lapse and time lapse options and we have the ability to turn on and off the video transmission charging. Now, just like the previous Weeble gimbals, this thing is metal, it's thick metal, and it's not cheap. They actually made the handle a lot better comparing it to the previous Weeble gimbals. And on top of that, the tripod will no longer need to be constantly unscrewed and then placed at the top to have that underslung mode. You will now get a secondary handle, which also comes with a quick release plate that slides directly onto the mount and locks into place. And it has a hard lock to prevent any accidents. We also have a mini rosette mount on the side, allowing you to attach any accessories. Now I will make a tutorial on how to rig this up to the max with the fall focus system, with the video transmission system, so stay tuned for that because that's coming. I'm also gonna make a separate balancing tutorial because Balancing a gimbal is very important, not only for battery life, but for stability as well. Now, enough with the chit chat, let's get to the raw footage and you let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. How does this gimbal perform? All right, we out here with beautiful Liz. Liz, how you doing? I'm good. You're gonna be modeling for me today? 
Yes, We're gonna be showcasing the new Juin Weeble 2. I'm gonna show you real-time footage. I'm gonna not slow any of it down, at least not for the tutorial bit. So I want you guys to really focus on the little vibrations, if you see any, or if there's any just imperfections in the shots. This is really rocky, rough terrain, so we'll see how the Weeble 2 performs. And by the way, before we get started with the video, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Liz Gunnell and on TikTok at Lord Liz. Awesome. Let's get this party started. Let's do it. Let's see how well she does. Come on, let's go. All right, so here we are. Image stabilizer is turned off. We're going to do a simple tracking shot with Liz. I'm using the joystick to reposition the camera whenever I want. This is pan follow mode. So pan will be moving, tilt will be locked. And just have a look at this rough terrain that we're walking on right now. I'm going to be focusing on the composition, trying to get the framing right. I'm not going to be looking at where I'm walking, so we'll see how well this gimbal compensates for this. All right, Liz, whenever you're ready, let's go ahead and start walking. Ready in three, two, one, go. Two hands on the gimbal. Remember, image stabilizer is turned off. This is all gimbal. 16, mil 16 millimeter lens. I'm going to have to leave all my bloopers in because this is <laughs> raw footage. Very nice. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section right now. How is this gimbal performing up in the clouds? It's beautiful today. All right, we're going to take it up a notch. I'm going to move it up to 35 millimeter. That's what I meant to say, 35. It's hot. Give me a break. I'm tired. The sun. It's rough. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of the complaints. 35 millimeter, guys. Image stabilizer is turned off. For those of you who don't know, the more narrow the lens is, the harder it is to stabilize. I am not rebalancing the gimbal, so we'll see how it performs with extra load. Ready in three, two, one, action. Here we go. Now there's also a little bit of technique that I'm using when walking and holding the gimbal. Two hands, elbow slightly bent, and I'm trying to walk heel to toe. And this is what's gonna get you that smooth gimbal footage. Beautiful, 35 millimeter, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? All right, so now we're on the 70 millimeter Sigma lens, 24 to 70 Sigma. I had to rebalance the gimbal because the battery was draining fast. If you have an unbalanced gimbal, it's gonna be sucking more power to compensate, so to preserve battery, I did have to rebalance. All right, let's see how well we do with the 70 millimeter. This is a great medium shot. You get a soft background, sharp foreground. Let's go ahead and start walking and action. How smooth is this going to be? Very nice. Again, I'm not really watching where I'm walking. So <laughs> I'm tripping over so many rocks right now and I'm stuttering at the same time, so that's great. And let's do a subtle pan. I hope you enjoyed that raw footage. Again, a big thanks to my friend Liz for helping me out with that. So let me know what you guys thought. Was this gimbal stable enough for those types of shots? Again, we checked out the 16 mil all the way up to the 70 millimeter focal lengths. So the more narrow you get on the lens, the harder it is to stabilize or get more stable footage. But overall, I think this gimbal performed exceptionally well. It did do a better job than the Weeble Lab and the Weeble S and it's a close competitor to the Crane 2S. So if you think this gimbal is the right option for you, go ahead and check out the links down below, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.